Craig, welcome uh, to the program. Thank you, Tony. Great uh, issue, important issue. Thanks for touching on it. All right. So what does the Biden executive order actually do? Well, uh, it's a broadsword rather than a scalpel. Let me just say this. Uh, Section 230 is a real problem for these big tech monopolies that are controlling online speech, particularly of conservatives. Uh, But this EO addresses so much more than that. As a matter of fact, it touches on health care platforms. It uh, talks about agriculture and cattle stockyards. It talks about the airline industry in terms of uh, reduce or increasing competition and uh, restricting monopolies. It has only a few lines about so-called online platforms, none by name. But we all know who the big uh, right. tech platforms hey, are that are conservatives. Craig, we're we're up against a break. Can you hold on just a second? I'm going to come back and and uh, and I, we'll, we'll try to wrap this up. Uh, but if you'll stick around there, thanks. folks, stick around. We're gonna I'm gonna let Craig uh, continue to uh, to give us insight into what this executive order actually did and how it falls short of what needs to be done. Craig Parshall, special counsel, American Center for Law and Justice. My guest, talking about. Uh, President Biden's uh, sweeping executive order that he issued on Friday dealing with big tech. All right, Craig, as we were coming into the break, you're talking about it's, uh, it, it, it goes after a lot more than big tech. But does it really address the issue that so many of us have concerns about with big tech? No, no, absolutely bypasses that. It says uh, that the Federal Trade Commission is to consider uh, investigating and researching whether or not big tech companies like uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Apple, and Amazon, uh, the ones that are engaging in active conservative suppression of speech, something not mentioned in the CEO, by the way, uh, whether they are monopolistic in terms of uh, suppressing competition, not suppressing free speech. And that's the issue. Uh, yes, they are anti-competitive. Uh, But more important than competition to the marketplace of products and services is the marketplace of ideas. And this EO says nothing about the suppression of free speech by these handful of silicon giants. Now, clarify for our audience, our big tech companies like Facebook, Twitter, uh, they're not subject to the First Amendment. As private businesses, they are. Uh, They are not. Uh, in other words, the First Amendment was designed to control the activities of government suppressing private speech rather than private companies suppressing uh, private speech. However, when you have a private company that uh, accumulates market dominance to the extent that these companies that I've mentioned have, then the Supreme Court says different rules apply if it really harms consumers. And I think there's nothing that harms consumers in this country more than freedom of being suppressed, particularly during political elections. I mean, they, they have, by de facto, uh, they, they become the virtual public square. I mean, this is where people go to have conversations, and they're choosing who gets in and who gets out. And because of Section uh, 230, no one can take issue with it. I mean, you don't have any recourse. After case has been brought, again, as you know, President Trump is a law against these giants himself. But case after case, the U.S. District or even state courts have kicked these cases out because Section 230 rate here. Uh, they give almost against all lawsuits uh, to these big tech monopolies. Uh, and you can't get your day in court, uh, which is why Congress, which created the problem, on uh intentionally you know 1996 look at where we were in the internet compared to where we are now right. these companies really didn't uh, exist where they do now so congress needs to fix this uh but in the interim if the president uh, president biden is going to do anything he needs to address the most precious commodity we've got and that is not just competition in marketplace but the freedom of speech of individuals on these giant monopolistic uh, platforms that control so much speech a uh, speech uh that as we know, they can impact elections, they can impact public opinion on a variety of issues because people aren't getting both sides. So, Craig Parshall, is this just a power grab on behalf of the federal government with what Joe Biden did? If you look at what they are proposing, go back to the old Obama days, 
of uh, uh, net neutrality. Net neutrality was a way of controlling not these Silicon Valley giants, but controlling the gatekeepers that get us on and off the Internet highway. Comcast, AT&T, you know, the big telecom company, or if you pay the price to get on. There's no proof they've ever discriminated viewpoints or opinions ever. Why would we regulate them but ignore it, continue to give a free pass to these big tech platforms? Again, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Amazon, and Apple. So a misdiagnosis by the Biden administration over what is the remedy for what is uh, ailing free speech in this country on these social media platforms. Patient is on the table and uh, is a dangerous situation and the doctor is, uh, is looking at the wrong textbook and prescribing the wrong medication and the wrong. All right. Uh, Craig Parshall kind of broke up there on us on the end. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, great to talk with you. Thank you much.